First off, we are going to start with the Havana 5 Kane edition. This is a 2021 release frame. It came out in the spring of 2021 with a very, very heavy beveling and angularity to the front face. And the arms of this and width of the frame are perfect for a medium sized face. It is a very beautiful frame, highly polished, that I find enjoyable to wear with denim and suiting. And this is the one thing about Jacques Marie Maj you will hear replete amongst many enthusiasts of Jacques Marie Maj that it's a frame that it was once a traditional thought that you could not wear heavy acetate frames with suiting. But Jacques Marie Maj really did come in and change a lot of that perspective for us all. This is the Havana 5 colorway first up in my collection to showcase to you guys this particular frame here is the Jacques Marie Maj Kobo this is a part of one of their Japanese heritage collections it is a retro frame that is very sleek and very daring it is one that they came out with drawing from inspiration from renowned jazz Japanese writer inventor and artist known as Kobo Abe he wore this particular style of frame when he was doing filmmaking it is an odd and eccentric style for some people it is a very it represents very very well on the face when you wear it it's very very stylized for those who has a flair to their personality it's one that um, i enjoy wearing when i'm doing um different lounge wears and different you know blazers that are highly elevated in their um exuberance and, and stylized that way this is a frame that has a, a it's almost as if you're representing the 1960s when we're in this particular frame. Very, very wonderful stylized frame. This one, like I said, is in Noir. And it comes with blue lenses that I have trained or, or changed into a lens that is for my vision. I did keep the lens blue, actually. A great, great temple width. As you can see here, the temple is jet black. This is not one that has a purview to see through to the actual temple metal until you turn it inward. And you'll see here where the metal is gold. This is a double laminate arm, just like the rest of them. This one has the clear laminate that is um, slightly argyle, as you can see there. Maybe it'll train his eye on it there. This here, if I can see it correctly, is the 195 of 400, I believe. This is a great, great frame. I enjoy wearing this one greatly, especially, like I said, out to lounges and things like that. Once again, the Kobo. Rounded 1960s style Japanese inspiration. Next up, we have the Jacques Marie Maj Tao. This is also co-signed and named as the Hopper. This was inspired by the film actor Dennis Hopper, who was a very big advocate of Southwestern living and had a great penchant for eyewear in his movies. And this is a similar style of frame that he used in some of his movies. I believe Easy Rider was a style that he used this particular sunglass style in and they took inspiration from that. It's a, a it's subtle to a thrill seeking type of personality. It's it pays homage, like I said, to Dennis Hopper. It is it has small intricate details on this one. This one has a very unusual square octagonal style of eye, which brings it to be more of a a fun pair of glasses than anything else. So I'll wear this one when I am again doing clubs, going out to lounges, or even just a very very outdoor type of day. Um, just it relaxing and enjoying my day this is also if i did not stay in the noir three colorway with a blue lens as you can see here the actual temple arm is very narrow on this particular frame juxtaposition to the previous kobo frame this one here is one i enjoy wearing it comes off great on my particular face shape um, as you can see the back lens is anti-reflective on this one um, very much so an enjoyable frame to wear if you can see there 
some of the detailing. Um, this is one of my older parasol. The hopper, if you could still see it there, is diminishing in its uh, vision, but it is engraved there. You will be able to see it forever. Um, some of the hallmarks of Jacques Marie Maj are the temple arms. Like I said, the seven barrel hinge is always going to be a hallmark. The three star at the hinge outlay is going to be a calling card. And on the front of the frame, not always, because sometimes they do eliminate it, but most times you're going to see a Native American arrowhead. This Jacques Marie Maj logo is raised every time. It is not one that has an indent. It is not one that's not flat. It is always raised. And you'll see the numbering system on this one. I can't see it because I did rub it off. Um, this is one of my first pairs that I was doing a lot of work <laughs> myself on, trying to make them fit better than I thought. Um, and I should have taken them to someone, but I did learn over time how to make these glasses fit my face better. So now I know how to achieve that. Um, but as you can see here, the actual arrowhead is a slight smoked gray there. Once again, this is the towel, one of my favorite um, from the line. Great, great frame. Great for clubbing, great for chilling, relaxing. The real secret, the towel. So this here is the Jacques Marie Maj Hemmings eyewear. And this here is a very, very ornate take on the octagonal slash rectangular faucets of eyewear. This one is a very popular style of frame right now. It's um, edgy, it's refined, it's classic, it's classy. Uh, but this particular eyewear is one that for Jacques Marie Maj, they used a acetate that they found that was a 60 year old acetate called Ginbu. Um, now why they named it Ginbu, I think it was after a tortoise that was in Japan that had the similar faucets of this particular eyewear. But if you look here, you can see through clearly that it's not a solid state frame. It is a acetate uh, that has marbling that is greenish brown. It's a very, very unique colorway and they don't make or did not make many of this particular acetate. I think this is the only frame that came out in the Ginbu colorway. It was designed with the gold fine line, clear double laminate on the temple frame. Very, very beautiful, beautiful green frame. It looks slightly brown when you're doing um, or when you're wearing certain clothes Say if you say a, a white t-shirt, this particular lens pops the green out. They did also a great job by adding green, a fine green tonal colorway for the lens to make it a much more refined color component as far as not contrasting it to the greenish brown frame color. So it made it really bring out the green versus knocking the green um, out of alignment with a higher contrast, say amber or blue lens. They did a great job on this particular frame the high beveling is also a great part of this particular frame as you can see this is a wide temple and it goes narrow Jacques Marie Maj does some great artistic visionary things with eyeglasses Hemix. one of my favorites I don't wear them often and it's not because I don't enjoy wearing them it's because I don't want this colorway to become dull I don't want the laminate to or the acetate to become dull. I want it to be as shiny as possible for as long as I possibly can have these particular frames. They do a great job from the factory making these jobs lustrous and beautiful and shine with some of the best polishing jobs. But I also know that once you get these frames out in um, the earth the elements, it does oxidize. So I want to keep these up. These are great frames, the Hemmings. Now these particular frames here are a frame that I picked up maybe five or six years ago. This is in an acetate that Jacques Marie Maj, as the Genbu, they found some acetate that was from 1967, I believe it was stated. And it was an acetate that they could not replicate once again. This is the Fitzgerald. It's a classic Wayfair style named after and given homage to JFK, our former president of the United States. This is one that he wore, if you remember the iconic photo of him on the sailing yacht. This is the style of lens and frame that he wore, not particularly in the colorway, but this is the style and shape of it. So like I said, it's a classic Wayfair glass, 
done in a very, very limited edition colorway. Um, this one here, for me, I really, really wear, rarely, rarely wear this one because of the, the unusual tones in it. It's a gray, amber, blue, black tone to the actual frame. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous acetate, the way that they made this particular frame. Like I said, classic Wayfair traditional lines comes down to the peaks and valleys, the flowing of the lens um, frame to the flowing of the temple arms is very, very classic Wayfair style while giving it that flair of Jacques Marie Maj. And you can see the reflective coating and polish that they do for these particular lenses is phenomenal. Um, this colorway is, it's a marbled colorway. I, I can't remember the actual um, distinctive colorway because they didn't produce many of them. I'm sure I can look it up and I'll drop it in the show notes to let you guys know exactly what this is. It was a fade to clear, yellowish clear, and the lenses in this one are particularly a pale yellow lens, so it goes great with anything summer spring vibes that's what this particular lens is for um it does have great great reflective back coating so you can wear them in uh, summertime off the water it's a great great frame a great great lens again this one has ever so slight beveling the face has a the bump of the wayfarer on it great great lens i enjoy this one a great great frame again okay it just popped in my head the actual colorway for this was called Goldstone. Beautiful, beautiful eyewear. The Goldstone Fitzgerald. So next up guys, what we have here is the Dylan. This, this Dylan is a iconic frame paying homage to the rock star um, Dylan. <laughs> no need to even emphasize that anymore. It very much so is one of their character driven pieces. This was one of their first frames introduced when they came out with their iconic styling. This came out in 2015 when they started the brand. It is a very, very new brand when you talk about heritage and collections of a, of a particular brand and their styling, but people have, such as myself, very much so been drawn to the classic styles of these particular frames to accessorize ourselves and give quite a bold statement um, to project our personalities forward, how we feel about life and how we feel about ourselves and our accessories. So this one here is the Noir 6 colorway. And the thing about the Noir colorway, it's always usually a black frame with the clear laminate inlay on the inside. The way they named the Noir 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is just a way to change the actual lens color. And on the Noir 6 versus the 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, the Noir 6 came out with a color amber lens that directly emphasizes the beauty of the tips where you can see that they do a cutaway for this particular frame and that cutaway shows the opposite double laminate side of the actual temple arm so you can see here how it shows and shines through um, these are a bold statement making pair of glasses as well these you do have to arch if you have a smaller head they look like they are not as wide as they are when you first get them but they are a wide frame where you have to arch um, the actual temples into your skull. So if you, they will flare out some from a medium head. They'll fit perfectly on a wide head. But these are some of my favorite lens colors. When you look through these particular lens colors, it is a very, very um, uplifting and almost a, a surreal look of how the world changes when you look through some of these amber lenses. It brightens everything. It makes, it's almost, it warms everything up. Just like you will see on a film filter or a iPhone filter where you go from cool to warm. That's how this particular lens comes off. And when you have a, a day where you wanna go out and feel a little bit more uplifting, if it's a dull day or if it's just gray outside and you still wanna be to the point where you wanna uplift, this is the perfect color lens to wear. This is the Dylan. Um, a great frame for the homage to a rock and roll star. These particular Jacques Marie Maj, if you guys have seen these before in one of my previous videos, I've worn these maybe once or twice in the video. I had picked up these particular frames as an optic frame because I could not find this particular um, agar style in the 
sunglass anymore. They had sold out everywhere possible to find this. I had my guys in all my optometry stores looking for it. They couldn't find it, but I had one that found the actual frame in his store optical. So I had this switched out from, um, which I was gonna do anyway. I had it switched out to a gradient lens and my optometrist here did a beautiful job. If you can see here, it's a gray, amber, rose green lens that he put inside it for me and this came out spectacular i've touched on this once before like i said this is the molino gold inlays fine line inlay this is a laminate clear just beautiful clear laminates on the temples with that agar style um the agar style is kind of like an argyle style or a tortoise shell it's one of their best marbling they produced i would say the colors are just beautiful and phenomenal. They flow great with all of the gold hardware. The actual, um, everything about this proportionally, how it distinctively looks, it's a great, great frame. This is one of my favorite frames in my entire collection, not just in my Jacques Marie Mosh, because this particular way that these, the beveling, the shape of the eye, the temple, everything is proportioned just fits great on my particular face shape and head shape um, once again this is the molino this is not the 55 this is the traditional i believe it's just a 50 a great great pair of eyewear by jacques marie Maj. i love these particular frames here i love them all actually but this one here is you know when i count down to what i would grab if i'm running out the house in the fire <laughs> this would be my first pair of jacques marie Maj that i grab once again, this is the Molino Agar with the custom gradient lenses. Great frame. Next up here, what we have is, I believe this is one of their most iconic sales, best-selling frames. This is the bronze colorway that they only used in 2016. They didn't use this particular colorway anymore. And I must say, I'm happy to have this particular colorway on this frame. This is the Torino. This is homage to a film director from Italy. Either a film director, let me get that right, either a film director or an architect from Italy from the 1950s wore this particular white state of frame. It's one of the very best fitting frames for a wide face. For a narrow face, it can become a bit cumbersome. But if you are a Jacques Marie Maj fan, you will know how to wear this particular frame. It's a great one to wear. Like I said, bronze with a slight brown. Almost the tint on this is very, very slight. As you can tell, you can see straight through the tint. But the back reflective coating makes it a great eyewear for sunglass uses. This one here has, once again, the fine line, um, gold, brass, as you can see there, how it's picking up in the light. The brass temple metals. Um, this is a very, like I said, a wide frame that comes off just great. In now, this one I will wear with a suit. This one with a gray or brown suit, especially I have a gray suit with some brown pinstriping in it. This one always makes that suit pop off when I wear it. Um, it needs a little polishing on the temple arms, but you can see there, there's a very narrow temple arm with a very broad face shape and like i said this one here it's one that i had to curve the arms as you can see there so it will attach to my head because it's a slightly wide frame for my face but this is one that i didn't know much about jacques remage when i saw it in stores in 2016 i believe and i just wanted the finest pair of glasses i could find that day and this is what the gentleman showed me and that's what started my love affair with jacques remage um, and i've just gone haywire with it as you can see once again the torino in bronze you won't find this colorway they might get it and name it something else eventually um, but this is bronze colorway it's a very crazy tonally brown slash orange slash green <laughs> kind of like the ginbu in color but solid state and a slightly more brown texture to it this is a great frame and this one doesn't have the gold arrowhead this one has a slight grade um, tonally texturized arrowhead as you can see I'm trying to point that out there you go great frame 
This particular frame here is the Stenden Hall. The Stenden Hall is a, another one of their pair of glasses that is, to me, just the epitome of classic, refined, luxury items. The Stenden Hall was briefly made in 2015, 2016 era of Jacques Rivage. It was one of their first iterations of frame making. It was, to me, one that they should not have discontinued. It should have stayed a classic in their particular eyewear. Um, design but they chose to go a different route with a different circular frame but the Stenden Hall man this is one of the best pieces of eyewear in my collection as well um, I don't know if it's because I gravitate toward the Argyle colorway or if it's just how the Argyle colorway really brings the faucets of their designs to life but as you can see here that is a very well designed piece of eyewear it is just ornate luxury at the epitome of it all again this is just like the Molino in its texture for the agar style tortoise shell complementary to any face this is one of my favorites as well as i stated and on this one as you can see the arrowhead is pointed outward this is one of their first design cues they didn't mind how they put the arrowhead they just wanted it on the frame most times it is a vertical uh, the way they place the arrowhead but on this one they had it horizontal seven barrel the gold emblem Jacques Marie Mosh Stenden Hall this one is fire this one was only I think this is 110 of 200 they didn't make many of these at all this one they were really doing small batch counts on their frames so back then in that era it was like 150 250 most of them didn't go above 300 now you may find some with four or five hundred count but these frames are very very classic refined optical frame with sunglasses in them that goes off spectacularly very studious very just warm they look classic with all kinds of attire great frame this particular frame here is the walker the walker is one of the best shapes that they make. This is a newer lens or newer frame that Jacques Rimage came out with about 2020. Um, and they did discontinue this one as well. I'm not sure why they discontinued some of their um, frames. I know that some they keep as a traditional from their, the longevity, I guess, that's when you'll start seeing the Noir sixes and all the number counts go higher. But for this one, the walker was an homage to our favorite actor, King of New York, Christopher Walker. And this is one of the best devised plans ever. So what they did here, they incorporated the hinge into a more established and robust face optical lens for this particular frame. So you'll see the extrusion um, come off of this particular frame going into a matching three point of the arms. The temple arms on this one are very, very heavy, thick arms. They're all 10 millimeter thick, but this one here is, a, it feels a bit more robust. I believe that's because of the way the frame comes off and into versus collapsing at the actual uh, base of the eye holes. It comes slightly protruding i'm sure you can see that that's a beautiful way they did that it makes it much more sturdy of a frame and the wrap around is just it makes it a much cleaner look when it wraps around the face like that and then here this is not a sharp turn i think that's maybe why they did it this is a very nicely done radius on that particular frame there that makes it look just beautiful on the face these have a green lens this is the Argyle colorway versus the agar. The argyle and agar are two different style of lenses or different style of frames, colorway acetates. This one here has a clear underlay on the ear rest that goes, you know, that's the double laminate side. The interior is clear, the exterior is the, the tiger brown and orange agar or argyle. Once again, this is the walker great great frame
Next up, we have one of my newer acquisitions from the brand. This is the Ichikawa. The Ichikawa, as I've already stated in my previous review of the entire frame, is a traditional Japanese shaped square slash rectangular shape that is coming from their 1960s Japanese inspired collection along with the Kobo. That was the first iteration. This is the second iteration of them devising a great relationship with their Japanese makers to come up with Japanese inspired frames. This one here for me is one of my favorite optical frames. It is the window is very bold. The purview is great when you have to have a pair of glasses that do not have a narrow um, eyewear purview to them. So this one here can take any style of glass um, and even the kind that I hate. <laughs> so uh, to get back on point, this one here is a transition lens for me. So this transitions to a black purple lens, more black than purple. This is one of my favorite new um, items to my collection of eyewear. Uh, the jet black laminate on both sides make it a very traditional great for suiting great for all suiting great for blues um, the hues that go the gambit colors that are warm colors that are cool these black frames are i would say the first in particular any person should go for because it is one that is not only complementary but it does not really make a stark bold statement as a piece of eyewear for your everyday use i think that you can have the black first then go into your different colorways and functions um, at a standpoint you know when you're going into a collection so find one that is black and then go from there uh, up or so the noir colorway of course and then this one this is a noir seven and noir seven is one particular that goes to the optical side it does not have any of the clear laminate on the inside as you can see here the Japanese inspired inscription um, I can't remember let me see if I can find the actual color not color but the actual number for this one I can't see it I need to go put my glasses on but anyway <laughs> I need to put these on to see the actual number it's in there somewhere I see it I feel it right there but I can't see it so anyway this is the Ichikawa you guys have seen these on my channel before I also did a full review I'll drop the car for that one but this is the Ichikawa, a great angular, almost like a cat eye, square cat eye. Very masculine, robust, sexy. I get plenty of compliments when I wear these particular frames from people. It's a great, great frame to wear. Ichikawa. These particular frames here are the Sexton. Now, the Sexton is one of my first pair of Jacques Marie Moss where I escaped the acetate, which drew me into the brand to explore their variations of full titanium frames. These are some of the lightest weight full titanium frames that I have ever worn. It's very, very structurally and integrally sound. These are some uncrushable frames. That's the beauty of having beta titanium. And for Jacques Marie Maj, they do some of the best designs when working with titanium. This comes with a red gradient lens. This is one of my favorite lenses in my collection. It's a colorway that they call Silver Tone or Silver Fox. The entire frame is silver with black rubber ear rest. Angularity. Now these are hard to describe, or not describe, but find and discover the nuances of it when you're talking about Jacques Marie Mosh. It does not have the calling card traditionally of Jacques Marie Mosh, which are the arrowheads, the three pin hinges, or um, the acetate boldness, the 10 millimeter acetate. But what they will do with these, you will see that the interpretation of the arrowhead is this little piece here will come in with a slight, um, a punch out of an arrow along the temple somewhere. And then you'll see a slight, um, if you can see this here, they'll use this effect of a stippling or a knurling on some piece of the frame eyewear. So it's here at the bridge, the knurling, and then alongside the actual frame, this knurling effect is um, this fine line knurling effect. So it's the fine line knurling effect that you will see in other glasses that are in the temple that I've showed previously. It's a great way to accentuate the frame while not giving away that it is Jacques Marie Mons frame. Now you can tell here with the gold 
um, nose pads, but that's something for you to know and others to find out. Um, it is one of the better parts of this frame. The Jacques Marie Maj is here. The actual numbering and author authentication is down there. Let me see what's on this side. I can't recall. Okay, so that's the name of the frame, the Sexton, handmade, crafted in Japan. Full bite, full, full titanium frame. It's a very, like I said, lightweight frame that is great to wear. Um, I love wearing this with my, I have a few pair of summer suits. Uh, I won't go back on. But I have a few pair of summer suits. One is a brown Solara that I love wearing with a slight hue of pink or brown in the summertime. It's a very nice April, May, June suit. And then this goes great with any linen blazer jeans throughout the summertime. This is a great frame, especially with that red, that ruby red to clear gradient in the lens. Great, great frame. I love wearing these in the summertime. A great face shape um, to these two as well with a single bridge. The Sexton. And last of my Jacques Marie Maj frame collection of 13 pairs, this is the Marbeau. And the Marbeau is one that I could not go without attaining for my collection. This is a double bridge, octagonal shape frame. It is in the silver two colorway. And the silver two colorway for them is the silver frame with gold inlays throughout. So whenever you see silver two, that is what that frame will look like, no matter if it's this Marbeau or any other frame that they produce. As you can see here, it has a great hidden hinge that goes up into the eyewear cavity and along where the arm or temple comes over. It does a covering effect. It's meant to look like it has a clip on, but it does not. As you can see here, just as with the sextant, it has the knurling effect. It's the fine line of the actual frame in the rim of the lens. This one here, this is the effect I was talking about. So that's the punch out, if you could see that. And it'll show the punch out to where they'll try to stipulate what it is and how Jack Marie Maj comes across. You'll get some of the arrows, fine lines there. Very distinctive, beautiful wearing pair of frames. Again, Beta Titanium. This is what they use, Beta 22. Now I'm not sure how to find information on what beta 22 is i'm not sure if it's a pri pri um, proprietary titanium for eyewear making and or for jacques marie Maj, but they claim that this is beta 22 titanium very lightweight structurally sound i have um set on these frames actually in my back pocket and they did not budge as you can see it's still with perfect symmetry and I don't mean I just sat down and said, oops, I actually jumped into the truck, sat down with my full weight and noticed that I had them in my back pocket for some reason. I think I was running through uh, changing my eyeglasses in the store or something like that and jumped into my truck and they did not have a scratch on them. The lens was protected well by the body and the frame and they did not budge in its integrity and shape. Once again, last but not least, I think I will acquire more in the future. But for right now, this is my collection of all of my Jacques Marie Maj 13 pair of glasses that I enjoy greatly and want to bring to you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. This was just a glimpse into my collection. I know we all love collection videos. And this is the Jacques Marie Maj collection at the beginning of 2024 for the dry down. You guys have a beautiful day. Talk to you later. Peace.